Hiya, it's Bree, your Salesforce study buddy, with another set of questions that were on either pretests from Web Assessor or from Trailhead. And I have the questions and answers and how we got the answers to help you study for your test. All right, so here we go with question number one. Ursa Major Solar placed a time dependent action in the workflow queue when the record was created. What are two situations that will cause the action to be removed from the queue? Choose two. A, if the record no longer matches the rule criteria. B, if another record triggers the same workflow rule. C, if the action is deleted from the workflow queue. D, if a validation rule is triggered for the record. Okay, so let's start with the top one. So again, we're looking for things that would make it no longer part of the queue, it gets removed from the queue. Why would it be kicked out? Well, if the record no longer matches the rule criteria, it would be kicked out. So A is, that one's a pretty good answer. So we need to find another one. If another record triggers the same workflow rule, well, here's the thing with that. We're talking about a particular record and it says if another record triggers the same workflow rule. Lots of records are waiting for this workflow rule. So that has nothing to do on it. They are two separate things are not contingent on each other. So B's out. C, if the action is deleted from the workflow queue. Well, yeah, if you change the actions in the workflow queue, the original record may not meet those criteria. So that would be a good answer. And then let's see D for, if the validation rule is triggered for the record, well, again, it's comparing two things that don't matter. The validation rule for the record could be like, um, you must have a date to save it. Does that matter if it changes the workflow queue or not? No, absolutely not. So I'm going to go with A and C. And we are correct. How should a system administrator provide a sales rep commission report that is visible only to the executive team? A, set an opportunity org wide default sharing setting to private, save the report to my personal report folder, save the report in a folder shared with the executive team, D, name the report for executive team use only, do not use. Okay, let's go through these and see which ones make the most sense. Set an opportunity org wide default sharing settings to private. Okay, so first of all, each user group or role can have its own level of access to a report or dashboard. So you don't want to set the whole organization to private for opportunity. That makes zero sense. So let's go to the next one. Save the report to my personal report folder. Again, if you're just making it and you're not launching it yet, save it to your personal report folder. But the question is asking, they want it visible to the executive team. If you save it to my personal report folder, only the person logged in can see it. So you as an admin can see it. And same like if a sales executive is messing around in reports and they save it to their own personal folder, you can't see what they're doing because it's in their personal folder. So that is nonsense. So let's see, save the report in a folder and shared with the executive team. Yes, that makes perfect sense. You would build your report and then you would share it with just the executive team, just that group. Uh, name the report for executive team use only, do not use. That's hilarious, but anyone who sees that's gonna click on it because people are just naturally curious. So obviously that one's not gonna work. So it's going to be C. And we are correct. Ursa Major Solar needs to transfer records from one user to another user during a mass transfer of account records. Which two record types can be used for this transfer? A, open cases, B, closed cases, C, closed activities, D, related custom object records. Okay, so let's think about this one for a second. So Fred quit, and so we're transferring everything over to George. What can we use to transfer them? So we could use open cases, that'll work. We can use closed cases, that'll work. Closed activities. So there's no option to choose closed activities when doing mass transfers. Um, and what's the last one? Related custom object records. Okay, so if we say we transferred all the open cases, right? What's gonna happen is the mass transfer tool will do a bunch of accounts, leads, service contracts, custom objects from one to another. And with the custom objects, 
the related custom objects will follow, but you can't choose related custom objects as a point of transfer, if that makes sense. So in this question, you can use open cases and closed cases to transfer whole accounts over. So let's see if that's correct. And it's correct. A company needs its customer service agents to collect and display different information on case records based on whether the customer are calling in with a question, product suggestion, or complaint. Which three features should you as the administrator use to meet this goal? We have support process, page layouts, permission sets, field level security, and record types. So, okay. And it wants us to choose three. So let's think about the first one, which is the support process. So this works because it uses the business process to display different pick lists um, according to each person's profile. So support process is a good, good one for the three. We'll keep that on our minds. Page layout. So page layouts control the layout and related lists on an object. So if we have the object and we could put a pick list to show that it is um, a question, products is there, suggestion or complaint, then that definitely would work. Um, permission sets, again, remember this, permission sets extends users functionality. It has nothing to do with what the question is. And then the last one, nope, there's two more. Field level security. Okay, this does not answer the question whatsoever because field level security limits access to fields using the profile and permissions on an object so or the page layout so that one's not gonna work and then what's the last one record types yeah record types totally work because you can change the pick list based on unique needs and so this question is asking what three things can you do to help the customer service team display different information and so i'm going with record types page layouts and support process let's see what we got yep yep and yeah. What are two reasons a user cannot be deactivated? This will happen a lot because if you work in sales, if you're working for a company that has a lot of sales reps, the turnover rate is insane. So you are in there like every couple of days, switching people's territories, deactivating accounts so you can use a license for the new hires. This happens all the time. So what are the reasons that they cannot be deactivated? Let's go through this. The user is the owner of an open opportunity. The user is a recipient of workflow email alerts. The user is a customer community administrator. The user's account is frozen. Okay, so A, the user is the owner of open opportunities. Well, duh, most users are, so that would not be a thing to trip up. You just transfer that open opportunity to a different sales rep or the new sales rep, so that wouldn't cause them to be um, unable to be deactivated. The next one is the user is a recipient of workflow email alerts. This is going to trip you up when you try to deactivate them. It will not let you. So this is one of the two reasons listed. But let me give you a quick thing. If this happens, go into the workflow rule, like go into settings, type in flows, go into the workflow rule and change the email to you, to your work email. Well, until you figure out who you're supposed to be sending it to, then you can deactivate that user and use their license for someone else. The user is a customer community administrator. It's just like the one above it. If they are linked to something like that, it will not let you delete them. So you just go in there and you make yourself the administrator until you figure out who you're going to assign it to, and then you can use their license. The user account is frozen. No, that won't keep them from being deactivated. I don't know if we've talked about this before, but the easiest way when someone gets fired or quits is to hurry up and freeze their account because then they can't log in and then you can start um, moving their accounts to other people or their opportunities to other people or their tasks to other people, but you, it won't keep you from deactivating them if they're frozen. So I'm going to go with workflow emails, which is B, and community administrator, which is C. An administrator at Ursa Major Solar is converting a lead and needs to capture custom lead data on the converted contact. What should the administrator do to accomplish this goal? A, 
map custom lead fields to custom contact fields. B, utilize the lead conversion wizard to select the fields. C, map the custom lead fields to standard co contact fields. D, utilize the data loader to move the custom lead data. Okay, let's go through these and see why they work or why they don't. A, map custom lead fields to custom contact fields. That is what I would do. Um, when leads are converted, the lead records, standard fields map to the contact, either if it's the account or the person account, opportunities, those will those will need to be converted and they need to be mapped. So A is what I would choose, but let's check out the other ones. Utilize the lead conversion wizard to select the fields. Um, fields are selected by converting the user when they are set up by the admin. So I don't know why there would even be anything about a lead conversion wizard. So I know the word wizard comes a lot in Salesforce. So maybe they threw that in to um, mess you up, but it's not correct. Map custom lead fields to standard contact fields. Okay, so this is incorrect because custom lead fields cannot be mapped to standard contact fields. Okay, so they can't be mapped together. So that one's out. So utilize the data loader to move the custom lead data. Why would you ever do that? It has nothing to do with converting the leads. So that's out and I'm going with A. And we are correct. Oh, wow. This one is wordy. Here we go. Ursa Medrasola recently acquired a company whose sales team has a unique sales process with stages that are different from the current setup of stages in Salesforce. The chief technology officer has decided that the new sales team should not change their process at all. What should the administrator do to incorporate the sales team process? So what's important in this question it uses a lot of words to say they hired a new team that has a different process with different stages. Keep that in mind. So A, create new values for the opportunity stage field. Order them so that the new sales team's values are at the bottom of the pick list. Okay, so that's that's nonsense words. Um, so record types lets you offer different business process, pick list values, all of that. But you would need record types. That's what we're looking for is record types. So let's, that one doesn't mention that at all. So let's go to the next one. Create a record type and page layout for the new sales team and add custom fields to the new stages. Sounds really good until you get to add custom fields for the new stages. You wouldn't need to do that because if you were doing a new record type and page layout, you could just, you wouldn't need custom anything. So that one is out. Create new values for the opportunity stage field and use field level security to control which team sees which fields. So that, I don't know, that one kind of sounds okay, but then when you look at it further, you, you really need new record types. That's the main goal. So not new values in the opportunity stage with, you know, field level security. We need new record types. So let's see what the last one is. Create new values for the opportunity stage field. Create a new sales process assigned to a custom record type for the new sales team. This has everything that we need, everything that it's asking for. The new sales team has a totally different sales process. So the second part of this answer is create a new sales process and assign to a custom record type for the new sales team. There you go. The answer again is in the question. They both match up. Let's see if we are correct. D and we are correct. Ursa Major Solar needs to fulfill the following requirements. One, a custom object must be created to capture account survey data. Two, users need the ability to select an account from the survey record and view related surveys on the account record. Which two actions should the administrator configure to meet these requirements? A, put the survey related list on the account page layout. B, put the account related list on the survey page layout. C, create a lookup relationship field on the survey object. D, create a lookup relationship field on the account object. So the first 
thing that we need to do is a custom object must be created to capture the account survey data. And how would we do that? Let's see. Put the survey related list on the account layout page. Yeah, that's how we would do the first one. So I'm going with A. Let's see what the other part of it is. Users need the ability to select an account from the survey's record and view related surveys on the account record. So we need some sort of lookup. So create a lookup relationship field on the survey object or create a lookup relationship field on the account object. So the question says users need the ability to select an account from the survey's record. So right there, it's saying that it needs to be on the survey object. So it's going to be C, create a lookup relationship field on the survey object. So the answers for this were going to be A and C. Which two actions should an administrator perform to provide a sales team with an easy solution for gathering customer requirements and sharing presentations with their customers? Choose two options. A, add customers to libraries. B, ensure opportunity teams are created for customers. C, add customers to private chatter groups. D, use Salesforce files to post presentations and chatter. Okay, so the first one, add customers to libraries. Well, external customers cannot be added to libraries, so that one is a no-go. What's the next one? Ensure opportunity teams are created for customers. Well, um, opportunity teams are for internal use only, and you can't add customers, so that's a no-go. What's the next one? Add customers to private chatter groups. Interesting enough, you can have chatter groups and add customers to it. So that is definitely a thing. So that is going to be a yes on C. Um, what is the next one? Use Salesforce files to post presentations and chatter. Well, if you know that you can add customers to chatter and then you can put files and presentations in chatter for them to see, that's gonna be a good answer. So I'm going with C and D. Let's see if we are correct. And we are, because we're so smart. Universal Containers regularly imports accounts from an external order system that has its own ID field for each record. What should the system admin do to help prevent duplicates during these imports? A, use a VLOOKUP to find matching records in Salesforce. B, use the ID from the order system and place it of the Salesforce ID. C, create a formula field that identifies matches. D, create unique external ID fields on the counts in the Salesforce for matching. So let's think about this one and go through them. Okay, so A, use a VLOOKUP to find matching records in Salesforce. VLOOKUP is totally an Excel thing. We all know how to do it. We don't use it in Salesforce, um, so that is incorrect. So what's the next one? Use the ID from the order system and place it in place of the Salesforce ID? Well, you can use an external ID field that contains records, but you don't wanna use it in place of. So that one is out. Create a formula field that identifies matches. Um, why would you ever do that? Uh, it makes no sense when there is a much easier option, which is create which is D, create a unique external ID field on accounts in Salesforce for matching. So you, when you're using your data loader, you can do that. So it's going to be D and we are correct. Well, that was 10 questions and answers by Brie um, and how I got the answers and the breakdown of why I chose the answers that I did. So, Everyone thinks a little bit differently and our brains work differently, but just remember sometimes, especially in this deck, a lot of the answers were in the questions. So don't get tripped up on that. Don't get tripped up on words like wizard. They use that a lot in Salesforce, but you have to know what wizards are real and what aren't. Um, just keep that in mind that the test gets kind of tricky like that. Um, thank you for watching or listening. Again, my name is Bree, and if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. I've never asked anyone to do that before, but I think it might be helpful as your study buddy. So if you have questions, just put them in the comments and I'll answer them and good luck on your test. Bye.